Hello and welcome to the session on mesh refinement in the Plaxis LE software. My name is Murray and I will be walking you through the training today. Uh, we'll start with uh, a look through the outline and we'll discuss some of the challenges associated with meshing. We'll also talk about mesh refinement and how it works in the software and uh, a short presentation or a short summary of mesh refinement will end the presentation. Within a finite element model, the model accuracy is closely related to the resolution of the mesh. In particular, a lack of mesh density is one of the primary sources of error in a finite element model. So subsequent solution accuracy can suffer without a proper mesh size. So in the context of a seepage model, modeling high gradients can require increased mesh density. And it is ultimately important to have a suitable mesh that will yield a stable solution. So a true check on this is that ultimately the solution provided by the software should not be affected by increasing the mesh density. However, there is a computation time cost for solving models with increasing mesh density, particularly in the 3D numerical models. This presentation looks at methods to find a balance between solution accuracy and mesh resolution. An insufficient mesh can also lead to convergence problems. In particular, flow in unsaturated soils problems near the surface is highly nonlinear and can affect the solution accuracy. Excessive gradients near the ground surface combined with highly nonlinear unsaturated soil properties can cause numerical instability and in incorrect solutions. Unfortunately, these types of scenarios are quite common in that infiltration of a precipitation event into a dry soil immediately can create numerical instability. However, this modeling scenario is quite common. One of the challenges with numerical modeling of seepage is that the physical processes involved are governed by highly nonlinear unsaturated soil properties and the boundary conditions that reflect the natural randomness of precipitation events as well as complex evaporative and evapotranspiration phenomenon as noted by Chuck Shackelford in 2005. It is therefore easy to get varying results from different numerical models and different modelers. If we look at the partial differential equation being solved for unsaturated seepage, we can see that it is heavily influenced by the unsaturated conductivity of the soil and the nonlinear water storage function on the right-hand side of the equation. These two sides of the equation, i.e. left and right, must balance successfully for the finite element answers to be correct. Inherently, mass must be preserved in this solution. So in this case, we're looking at nonlinear uh, soil water characteristic curve and permeability functions for two different soils, coarse and fine. And what we see is that the coarse material desaturates faster at a lower air entry value than the fine material. The fine material has a higher air entry value. Uh, and we see the related influence of the conductivity function. The coarse material has an initially higher hydraulic conductivity but may drop at a steeper slope than the, uh, the fine material permeability function. And so at any given suction, it is entirely possible that the fines might have a, a higher conductivity than a coarse depending on the level of suction that is present in the soil material. So the practicalities of how mesh refinement or mesh generation and refinement are implemented in the software is, are as follows. There is first an initial mesh generation stage in which a full tetrahedral or a triangular mesh is automatically generated. In two-dimensional problems, the mesh could be either triangular or quadratic. 3D models involve tetrahedral elements. Then there is a subsequent refinement of the original mesh, mesh based on the original mesh generation. In this step, the user can select to refine the mesh by a zone or along a border of the problem. Typically, the mesh is refined in an area of high gradients or uh, a lot of activity that is happening along a boundary. An example of this may be seen in the figure of the earth dam below. A dialog used to generate the mesh can be seen on the right-hand side. The element type can be set as triangular or quadratic, and so subsequent revisions of the meshing can be done per region or per boundary segment. Uh, 
Uh, this slide shows a simplistic square model generated by a triangular mesh or by a quadrilateral mesh. In this case, the user wants to refine the mesh along the right-hand side because the interest is in tracking flux out of the numerical model. The interest is to get high accuracy on the calculations of flow. The solution can be seen for both triangular and quadrilateral elements, and it is very similar. There are minor differences between the calculated flux. The user could further subdivide the mesh along the right-hand side of the problem to see if further refinements change the calculated flux. In this example, the user desires to calculate the flow through a three-dimensional extruded earth dam, including a core. Therefore, there are potential areas where mesh refinement might be needed along the surface, where boundary conditions are applied or between the core and the fill regions where there might be a dramatic change in permeability. The mesh refinement can be adjusted to refine along the exterior or interior surfaces of the 3D model. This model from the Feijiao uh, tailings dam illustrates the combined approach of defining geometry within the Plaxis designer software and then creating a volume mesh in the groundwater model module of the Plaxis LE software. This is a challenging model to create but allowing allowed groundbreaking new levels of detail in the representation of chimney and uh, chimney and blanket drains that had not been achieved prior to this. This is an illustration of the new levels of 3D numerical modeling which are now possible given the meshing capabilities within the software. So a simple illustration of how mesh, mesh density might affect any uh, particular infiltration problem can be seen by setting up two identical one-dimensional numerical models. The intent is to start with a soil column that is dry and is one meter high. We will then apply a precipitation event to the top of the numerical model and let's let the water infiltrate into the soil. On the left-hand model, there will be a total of 51 nodes, and on the right-hand model, we will use 199 nodes to model the problem. In the numerical model with the 51 nodes, we can see that infiltration happens over time. However, there is a problem with numerical oscillation at this interface between the dry soil and the wetting front. This numerical model may still give somewhat reasonable times of infiltration, but the solution can obviously be seen to be oscillating. On the other hand, the model with the 199 nodes can be seen to be minimizing the effects of the oscillation. Given the steepness of some unsaturated soil water characteristic curves, it may not be possible to entirely eliminate certain oscillation effects, but it should definitely be possible to minimize the negative effects. So in summary, the software implements methods for automatic mesh generation and manual refinement of the numerical mesh for seepage modeling. 2D can use triangular or quad meshes. Three-dimensional models can make use of tetrahedral meshing. It is also noted that the combination of Plaxis Designer plus Plaxis LE groundwater module allows creation of 3D models of added complexity. The mesh can also be refined along boundary surfaces or internal boundaries to specifically enhance the modeling of infiltration to dry soils or unsaturated flow problems with large changes in hydraulic conductivity between adjacent, adjacent zones. And thank you very much for your time and attention.